Hi everyone, uh, good to be here. Um, so uh, we've heard a lot about uh, STOs. Uh, I think even within the space of um, just real estate alone, as uh, my colleague Ed was mentioning, there's trillions of dollars of real estate that's going to be tokenized over the next few years. So we have a huge task ahead of us just to do what we call the primary issuance, to do the initial tokenization. Um, but today, just uh, you know, to make it interesting, I thought I would talk a little bit looking ahead beyond the initial tokenization to some of the future opportunities that we have based on how technology is evolving over the next few years here. So this, so you already know, you all know what a security token offering is. It's basically fractional uh, ownership of real estate in this case. Uh, you've heard a lot about Red Swan already. Um, won't go over that again, but basically we already have a large number of assets on chain. We expect a lot more coming pretty soon. Um, so the, one of the things that we think is very interesting is the evolution of stable coins. Um, because stable coins, I think, will bring a lot more folks from the retail side of the equation uh, into the market. It'll make it very easy for people to uh, transact and buy digital securities. Um, there are a lot of governments, I was just looking earlier, I think almost every government in the world has some kind of project now based on central bank digital currencies. Some have launched them, some are piloting them, some are researching them. But ultimately, the world is definitely moving in that direction, which adds another layer of legitimacy to the whole world of digital currencies. And uh, as my colleague had said, once people have these digital currencies in their wallets, on their phones, they're naturally going to want to spend them on something. And I think a large part of that something is going to be digital real estate because it's one of the largest asset classes in the world. Um, side by side is what's happening at the uh, country level with the um, CBDCs. A lot of the DLTs are also working on their own projects for creating stable coins. So for example, we have partners with Hedera and they're working on their own stable coin. And again, they already have an audience of millions of users that hold Hedera wallets that will naturally now have access to a stable coin which again makes the user experience much easier when you then want to take the next step and start investing in digital assets such as, uh, such as real estate. Um, we've heard about a little bit at a conference uh, this week uh, about secondary markets. So that's the next step after the initial issuance. People then want to trade. Um, and I think we're going to see, uh, we already have a good momentum. Uh, some of the folks that were here, like INX, IXSwap, obviously there's T0 and some others. So we have several um, secondary trading options in the market already. Obviously, it'll take a little while for that to build up, but it's already in motion. Um, but one of the things that we think is going to happen uh, beyond that is the creation of specialized exchanges and ATSs. Um, uh, just the way that we have NASDAQ, when you go to NASDAQ, you know you're dealing with technology stocks. Uh, in an area like real estate, people who invest in real estate, they have specific understanding of real estate, specific requirements. They want to look at all the different categories of real estate. Um, so I think there will be specialized exchanges which allow people to go to one place. They know exactly what they want to get. They're not going to be distracted by too many different assets. Um, because ultimately, once uh, tokenization continues to take off, there will be millions of assets of everything will be tokenized. Um, I had a project where there's a cow being tokenized. So there'll be so many different kinds of things being tokenized. I think you're going to have to have that focus to make it easy for investors to know exactly what they are looking at. Um, one of the most exciting areas, I think, is kind of like the additional um, opportunities that you can layer once you've digitized real estate and you now have trillions of dollars of these digital assets. Um, you can now sort of look at the whole world of finance, the old world of finance, and start rethinking all of that on top of this baseline of digital assets. So obviously, lending and mortgages is a huge area. Um, and so you already have some initial uh, DeFi lending protocols like Aave and Compound, um, which allow users to borrow against digital assets. And of course, again, real estate is going to be a huge category of those digital assets. So once people buy into these tokens and they have their real estate tokens, they can then use that as collateral for loans. Um, and likewise, in the mortgage system, anyone who's bought a house or an asset knows how uh, tiresome that process can be to go through a mortgage application uh, and get a mortgage. Um, but in this case, uh, once property tokens can be used as collateral for mortgages, you can actually potentially in the future automate the whole process from interest rates to payments um, uh, and so on. So 
Again, the numbers around uh, the mortgage industry are huge, you know, $17 trillion in US alone. Um, so this, this whole area of combining DeFi um, with, um, with mortgages, um, I think is gonna be very exciting. And the precursor to make all that possible is the tokenization of the underlying real estate, which is what we're doing uh, at Red Swan. Um, the other area that's also very interesting within the DeFi space is, uh, is yield farming. Um, so obviously that's gone up and down. It's still very nascent. It's still very early. Um, but this is where investors can stake their tokens uh, in liquidity pools uh, in, 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 in uh, return for, for interest, essentially. Um, so you have an opportunity where real estate tokens could be integrated with, lead farm, with yield farming strategies. Um, and so that way you have the stability of your real estate combined with the high liquidity potential returns uh, of DeFi. Um, another area that I'm personally very interested in is AI. And I think it's, it's interesting we have this blockchain revolution and we have the AI revolution sort of happening side by side. And where they cross together, it's even more exciting. Um, and I think one of those areas is when you start having AI algorithms automatically manage your portfolio strategy. So if you were in the yield farming space, you're using your, your real, real estate tokens, of course, there might be many different potential DeFi platforms in which you could allocate your tokens, but you could have an AI agent to automatically, in real time, keep rebalancing your portfolio and optimize your, your yield and your return. So I think this cross is gonna be uh, one of the very exciting areas in the future. Um, again, sticking with the theme of AI, um, I think smart contracts today um, are still pretty basic in what they do, but there's you know, smart contracts basically introduced logic to the whole world of, of blockchain. And um, I think they're just at the beginning of what is possible. So basically today, the way we use smart contracts, um, we do simple things like you know, automate di uh, dividend distribution, uh, transaction execution, obviously escrow. And in the world of what we do, uh, regulated compli compliance is very important. So for example, Ed mentioned that we support both Reg D and Reg S investors in the United States. In the case of Reg D investors, they have what's called a lockup period, which means once they buy those tokens, they have to hold it for at least 12 months before they can resell on a secondary market. And in some cases, that's controlled by the logic in a smart contract. But all, all of that is still only sort of scratching the surface of what is possible with these smart contracts. So, um, as we go forward, um, we can move on to more sophisticated smart contracts. Smart contracts, for example, that uh, integrate with IoT, so you can actually monitor the state of the asset itself. You can have real-time information on the state of the asset and feed that into things like perhaps um, how you manage your leases. Um, you could even, as it says here, you could even monitor the credit scores of your tenants in real time because as everything moves onto the blockchain, that information about tenants' credit, credit worthiness is gonna be also in real time. And you might have some, some rules within your tenant contract that hey, if their credit score goes down, then maybe their deposit has to go up and so on. So that's just you know, some of the ideas that we see uh, that could happen as we have more and more data feeding in from IoT and from uh, the AI world into our system. We can then use that to actually potentially even make predictions like when is the best time to issue the next round of a security token offering based on data from the market and data from the assets. Uh, and in terms of, uh, this is just a little overview of what are the type of technical advancements within smart contracts that will make these things possible. So obviously, if you want to get data from the outside world to feed into your smart contract, that's where Oracle networks uh, come into play because the oracles are the interface between the outside world and these smart contracts. Uh, so you have protocols like Chainlink, which are leading the way in terms of making that possible. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit already on the AI and IoT. Um, uh, and then uh, in terms of just the flexibility of the smart contracts themselves, there's a new protocol called the Diamond Standard. Basically, it makes it possible that you can modify smart contracts because in the first generation of smart contracts, that was one of the limitations. They were kind of hard to modify them once you set them up. Um, I think this was also mentioned in one of the talks, but interoperability of blockchains. So now we have multiple blockchains, and obviously, if you issue on one blockchain, you might want to trade and sell to people on another blockchain, and right now, that's still a little clunky. Um, but there are folks working on that as well. So. Polkadot, Cosmos, also Chainlink. These are projects that are looking up at how we can 
uh, have seamless interaction across different blockchains. Uh, and of course, from, a, from our perspective in the real estate space, um, that's important because it multiplies the liquidity. Uh, so now you have liquidity pools, whether it's people on the Hedera network or Polygon network or other networks, you have a combined utility across all those networks, especially when you come to the secondary market and you, you want to have um, as much liquidity as possible. Um, and then just to wrap it up, AR and VR, uh, technologies that those that's another revolution that is happening with the blockchain and the AI happening in parallel. I think it also uh, is relevant to real estate because real estate is a physical thing. You want to be able to see it and touch it and and see the state of it. Um, so you know already people are beginning to do these virtual tours um, where you can look around the asset that you're going to buy and walk around. Um, AR a augmented reality is interesting too because you could be walking around the asset and then you can see information about the asset. Um, and I think since we are now trading in tokens, you can attach this information to the tokens themselves. So if you buy a token, you're interested in the current state of your asset, you can have a real-time view on exactly what is going on with your asset. Um, so obviously we have a lot of work to do before we get to all this. This is kind of the next wave. Uh, the first thing we have to do is to tokenize trillions of dollars, which is no small job. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to just look ahead a little bit. Um, we have so much opportunity in this space. Very excited to be here. My first time to Korea, so thank you for having me. Happy to take any questions. Oh, we have a lady. Uh, on our platform, we don't actually do that right now because the cryptocurrencies are very variable. Uh, so what we do support is stable coins. So for example, if you had cryptocurrency, you convert your cryptocurrency to USDC or USDT, and then you could buy on our platform. Um, so the reason we don't directly take um, cryptocurrencies is that obviously you know, we have to collect the funds from the various investors. We don't want to collect those funds, then the value suddenly drops and before we give the funds to, the, to our sponsor. So for stability, we prefer you to convert to stable coins and then buy using stable coins. Or you can buy with regular fiat as well. Uh, I leave that to my colleague Ed, Ed and his 20 years of experience. Uh, now we have a team, obviously, that does due diligence. Um, I think that is actually one of the biggest differentiators of Red Swan, um, is that we came from a background, not just technology background, but also real estate background. So we, um, we have a team that does due diligence on each asset before we even accept the asset. We only accept maybe about 10% of the assets that come to us. Because, uh, and we also use third parties like EY, um, you know, KPMG, some of these big firms to review financials and so on. And, uh, how do you get paid? What's your business model? Yeah, we have several revenue sources. So there are um, fees uh, for the initial tokenization of the assets. So when an owner of real estate comes to us to do a tokenization, they pay certain fees. When the asset is sold, since we are going to be a licensed broker dealer, we can set brokerage fees. It's basically we're raising capital, so we have brokerage fees. And then we also have assets under management, so as those assets are in our ecosystem, we can also take fee management fees uh, for managing the assets. And then ultimately, in the, you know, once there's a, a robust uh, secondary market, there's going to be uh, trading fees, just like any ATS or exchange. So it's an exchange, right? It's not an option. Yeah, there's several stages. The first stage is to tokenize uh, and sell what we call primary issuance. So a good analogy would be like an IPO of a company. If you have a private company that has never been traded before, you know, Goldman Sachs or one of these banks will take them public. That is what the first step we do. We call it primary issuance, and that is its own piece. Once it's then public, you then have the secondary trading where people can buy and sell those shares. You're welcome. We've got one more. 레드스완은 상업용 그 부동산만 취급을 하고 있는 것 같은데 혹시 완성된 리조트나 또는 어 개발 예정인 리조트도 어그 STO 관련돼서 어 취급을 하는지 여쭤보고 싶습니다. Um, yeah, you're correct. At the moment, our focus is on commercial real estate. Of course, commercial real estate has many diff covers many different categories. Um, we, we, within commercial real estate, we do both uh, stabilize existing assets with existing uh, revenue and also new development projects. So if you have a new development project, as you may have seen in the video that Ed showed for the Middle East, some of those assets are basically land with 
a plan to build, you know, maybe like a huge hotel or something like that. Those kind of projects we can support as well. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Cool. Thank you so much for that inspiring session.